So the reading for today, Chris, uh, takes us into so many passages in Song of Myself that make me, at least, really start to think about Whitman's conceptions of democracy and what the democratic eye is going to come to be. I love the end of uh, section 14 where he says, what is commonest, cheapest, nearest, easiest is me. Me going in for my chances, spending for vast returns, adorning myself to bestow myself on the first that will take me not asking the sky to come down to my good will, scattering it freely forever. I mean, there's, there's the definition of the me for Whitman. What's commonest, cheapest, nearest, easiest is me. It's not a me that is looking to rise in the hierarchy. It's a me that's looking to expand itself by reaching out to everything around it to enrich itself with those things. And I think of a, a passage in Whitman's uh, uh, notebooks in which uh, this is one of the places where you can see how he uses phrases and just pulls them out and makes them part of the poetry. But he says, um, uh, good brains, ancient and modern, agree that what is nearest and commonest is always last to be realized. For instance, within the infinite wells of meaning, spiritual and material, lying beneath our census tables, within the 40 million aggregate, which is about the total population of the U.S. today, behind the tremendous fact of our growing citizens with their social, political, and business relations, involving every question of life and death, lies folded a fact still more tremendous, the fact of the young. As I speak, there are now existing in these states coming forward at the rate of over a million fresh recruits annually, an army leaving out infants and grown persons of 15 million, counting both sexes from five to 20 years of age inclusive. Think what this splendid mass of ductile humanity each for his or her own sake, under a schooling worthy of our time, were eligible to become. And there you get that, that sense, not just of every individual expanding into something larger, more diverse, more democratic than it was before, but thinking of the aggregate of the population coming forward and, and in that evolution of youth within a generation, a much more democratic culture is going to result. And for that democratic culture, we'll need a democratic imagination, which is the subject of our next unit. Whitman creates an I and a you character, and in the relationship between these two characters, the discourse that travels back and forth between them and across the ages, we begin to see the uh, the very nature of the democratic process, which is at the heart of his poem, isn't it? Yeah, it's, um, as, as we talked about earlier, the, the poem seems to me to be an attempt by Whitman to voice a democratic I, what this truly democratic I would be. Uh, America was uh, uh, setting out to be the the first true democracy. And in Whitman's mind, this had something to do with politics, but not primarily to do with politics. Democracy was going to, going to require a, 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 a complete refurbishment of every aspect of life. We we're going to have to think differently. We we're going to have to identify what the self is differently. We were going to have to think about religion differently, think about philosophy. Everything was going to be altered by this. Our, what would a democratic military look like, a, a military that, that broke down hierarchy? Uh, Whitman would, would work with and think about these things. And I think, you know, right at the heart of it, when we think of the, the opening of the poem, I celebrate myself and what I assume you shall assume, for every atom belonging to me is good belongs to you. 
I mean, there ultimately is the, the that first brief attempt to articulate a radical democratic voice. Right? The two things that uh, probably have uh, generated uh, virtually every war throughout history, right? uh, uh, we fight over property uh, and uh, we fight over beliefs. Right? What I assume, you shall assume. Every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. In two lines, Whitman obliterates the things that have divided, separated, and uh, 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 created uh, uh, anti-democratic feeling uh, throughout history. All right? But the, the atoms, that, that sense of, of every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you, it's part of what Whitman is really going to push through this poem in all kinds of ways, scientific ways, philosophical ways, that notion that what I am, materially, what I am, Whitman would say, is, uh, is, is a, a conglomeration of things that are in, in the moments and the, and the months and the years before I was born, if you track these atoms back, look where they look where they went. And if we go back, yeah, if we go back millions of years and billions of years, and ultimately, you know, it's it's the the old '60s mantra: of we are stardust, right? I I, I mean, it, it, in in Whitman's mind, this is one of the great revelations that 19th century science is giving him. We are all the same atoms, and we are never actually, when we talk about ourselves being a material body. We have to recognize that that material body, in fact, is continual process, right? Day in and day out, it is shifting. We're not the same material thing today that we were yesterday or 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Our body has completely altered and changed. And this is coming at a moment of democratic crisis. He's writing in the years running up to the Civil War, and he sees all around him evidence that the democracy is breaking down. How does that shape the, the poem? Yeah, well, democracy, democracy breaking down, democracy, I think probably in Whitman's mind, uh, uh, failing, failing to form. Certainly the, uh, the, the slavery issue was, uh, uh, was, was throwing this uh, uh, directly in, 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 in the face of every thinking American at this point. You know, we, we built a country on the, on the idea of, uh, of the creation of all human beings as equal beings. And, uh, and yet written into the, into the Constitution is the fact that they are not. That they are not, yeah. And, and so Whitman recognizes early on that uh, America itself uh, is a process. You know, I mean, I always uh, think when I hear of Discussions of the uh, of, of, of the Supreme Court and whether we've got a, uh, a kind of evolutionist uh, uh, view of the Constitution or an originalist view of the Constitution, Whitman would be definitely on the evolution side, right? That is, we we kind of we 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 set a goal: uh, all men are created equal. And in setting that goal, even in the stating of it, we recognize that over time that phrase all men becomes problematic everything is continually in process needs to be rethought needs to be have to have implicit hidden hierarchies revealed and broken down so that that when we think of song of myself we i think part of what we experience as we read it is that it's a poem that in its very structure is continually breaking down and then putting itself back together. You know, Whitman will generate one of those long catalogs, you know, and everything feels like it's coming apart. And where's the self here, you know? And then it pulls it all back together and then it breaks it down again. Continual process built right into the, 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 the structure of the poem. And in that way, the poem is teaching us not only how to be individuals conscious of past, present, and future, but how to participate in the body politic, 
to understand that in that surging forth and drawing back that energy, that dynamic is a part of who we are in a, in a democracy. Yeah, who we are in a democracy and that 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 sense that that yeah the 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 body politic is every bit as much a material body as our own bodies exactly. are and and every bit as much a spiritual body as our own bodies are. I mean when we use those terms spiritual and physical in Whitman, one of the one of the great things that Whitman accomplishes in this poem, I think, is to suggest how there's really no separation between physical and spiritual. You know, if we see the physical as it really is, Whitman would say, we're seeing continually. If we could, if we could somehow uh, uh, color uh, the atoms of the world in uh, uh, a billion different ways, and just stand back and watch movement of atoms through the world for one minute we'd probably all go insane because everything would be shifting. And, and everything is connected. Everything, everything is connected. Moment we, are, we're, we, we may think that we can divide ourselves, but in fact we are all caught up in it. Sure. Scientists even have, have worked out the, the formulas that, uh, that make it clear that uh, uh, we literally are breathing um, uh, the atoms of uh, that 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 uh, uh, composed in in some way Walt Whitman, right? I mean, or Jesus Christ, or uh, 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 anyone you want to uh, uh, name in history. In any given day, there's a one in three chance that we've in, inhaled one of the atoms that, uh, that 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 made up that particular body. Everything is continually shifting. And his great insight is to have discovered. Grand linkage that uh, could be turned into a poem. The grand linkage that becomes, uh, in 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 its ultimate realization, uh, true democracy. It becomes uh, not a democratic form of government, but it becomes a democratic way of living and understanding life. That that everything around you that looks like it's the not me, in fact, is really part of you. And makes me then think that when he's looking to the future, that I speaking to the you in the future, he's understanding something also central about democracy, that it is not a static construction. It is something that happens moment by moment as we move our way through the world. Right. It, it all has to do in this poem and in Whitman's politics and his metaphysics it's a place where the poetics and the metaphysics and the politics all seem to come together and mm -hmm. it's in process. Mm -hmm. That idea that that everything is process. The I is a process. The nation itself is a process. Mm -hmm. Democracy is a process. Mm -hmm. Everything is continually altering and shifting and forming and reforming. And we sense that, I think, as we read Song of Myself, that that we, we have an eye that is continually uh, building itself up from things all around the world. Accumulating and Accumulating, them. absorbing, getting larger and larger until it feels as if the self is so large it has lost any sense of identity and it has begun to diffuse into the world itself. And then in Song of Myself, we'll feel those moments where Whitman says, all right, let me pause a moment here. Am I large enough to contain all of this? And the answer for Whitman always is yes. I contain multitudes. That's the nature of a democratic self. It has to learn to be comfortable with contradiction, with continual um, uh, uh, struggle against um, uh, a, a, a sense of a narrow, discriminating self mm -hmm. and give itself over to the wider, larger, always increasing democratic self. We could say even that surging and ebbing flow that we have in the lines and from section to section uh, patterns the very ways in which a democracy works. We move in one direction and then we, we contract, we make some progress, we make less progress, 
That seems to be what he's the atten essential tension to the poem, isn't it? It, it is, and 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 it's 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 that idea of an evolutionary force uh, in nature and human history. Uh, uh, how how can we urge that democratic evolution yeah. along? Uh, because for Whitman, it really is a kind of evolution from a feudalistic cast of mind to a democratic cast of mind, and he would have to invent a poetry mm -hmm. that would be as open and as non-discriminatory and as absorptive as he imagined an ideal democracy would be. Yeah. It's, it's why Whitman loved photography. Yeah. Right? Uh, um, photography gave us a new sense of democratic beauty, Whitman said, because a photographic field, a photographic plate, was just open to the impressions of the world. Whatever the sun lit itself upon would show up in a photographic plate. And so Whitman said, we have to relearn what beauty is. Beauty is not selecting out yeah. the, 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 the aesthetically pleasing, Beauty is fullness, completeness, everything having its place. And a photographic image, Whitman said, teaches us finally to see democratically. Yeah. Anything that's there has its place in the, in the picture. And that includes even the threat to democracy, which he can feel building as he's writing the first draft of Song of Myself, and which will come to fruition in the Civil War. Yes. and. And uh, you know, I, I, I think of something Whitman said right after the Civil War about democracy when he wrote his great essay on democracy called Democratic Vistas. And he said, we've frequently printed the word democracy, yet I cannot too often repeat that it is a word the real gist of which still sleeps quite unawakened. It's a great word whose history I suppose remains unwritten because that history has yet to be enacted. Yeah. And, and that's, that's really the key. Whitman was under no illusion that he was living in a democracy. He instead had the hope that he was living in something that would evolve into a democracy. On its way to a democracy. And it occurs to me that civil war is also the first war that gets photographed in, 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 in great measure. And that record, a visual record of the horror of war, of the prisons of war, becomes a part of who we are as a people. And it seems to me he's created a poem that can take all of that kind of information in. Yes, that's, that, that's right. And, and, and photography was at such a state during the Civil War that we, we literally have no uh, photographic images of battles yeah. because battles yeah couldn't be photographed. It's after the fact. Right, yeah. either, either the preparations for the battles yeah. or the after effects, yeah. the hospitals mm -hmm. and, uh, and so on. And that, that, that becomes a record, Whitman believed, that photographic record of the war, of, of, of why war is not the grand heroic yeah. thing that it had been portrayed before, mm -hmm. but rather the war of amputations, the war of death and despair. Uh, we see the after effects, we see the the farm fields of America covered with corpses. So the threat to democracy, though, what does he do with that over the course of the rest of his life in the revision of the poem? Well, it, it, that, that's, that's going to be the, the big challenge for Whitman is, for, I, I think he actually goes through a period of about three or four years where he thinks leaves of grass he thinks Song of Myself is a poem of the past, that it was a poem that was uh, built on the idea that any self, as well as the nation itself, was large enough and could contain contradictions yeah. and still remain unified, yeah. still remain whole. And that faith was shaken for Whitman and for the entire country, yeah. obviously, as it came apart at the seams. And it was only after the war that Whitman really began to reconceive of the idea that now that we've been through what we've been through, uh, we can begin the process now of re-embodying the idea that contradictions, that differences in views still can be part of a unified whole. 
And it's something that I think we all see day by day we're still living with. You know, the, the, it's, it's, it's kind of amazing, but the talk of secession, you know, con continues to this day. And it's, it's always that, that battle between whether there can be a, 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 con con a conceived identity mm -hmm. that is large enough to hold opposing views and still say this is America, this is a self. Um, and and it's, it's Whitman's great faith.